good morning this is deepak fatak from iit bombay welcoming you all to the first formal workshop under our t10kt project which is talk to 10000 teachers at a time i understand that there are close to 6000 teachers all across the country participating from 167 colleges so i welcome you all it's our privilege today to have with us as the chief guest for the brief inaugural function none other than dr anil kakorkar all of you of course know about him an additional fact that i would like to mention is that he is also the chairman of board of governors of iit bombay currently i would like to request dr kakorkar to be escorted to the dais by professor gaitonde who is the faculty in charge of this course come sir come 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 and request professor gaitonde to welcome him with a bouquet i would like to request uh, professor gaitonde's colleagues who are going to be the faculty teaching in this course uh prasap bhandarkar and prasap puranik to also join us in the dais please it is now my privilege to welcome the faculty here prasap gaitonde as the leader of the gang <laughs> thank you thank you prasap puranik thank you prasap bhandarkar ordinarily the inaugural session is of one hour duration but our chief guest dr kakorkar has to leave early because he has another engagement later so what i'll do is i'll just very briefly introduce the notion of these workshops and then talk to you later and then request uh, dr kakorkar to share his thoughts with you many of you might have attended similar workshops in the past but for all those who are not familiar with this workshop series let me mention that when iit bombay started its distance education program in in the year 2000 to 2002 using vsats we started engaging people at remote places through two way interactive video and after experimenting with about 200 to 400 participants at four to five centers we expanded uh, through a project funded by tifac to train teachers through such workshops we expanded to about 500 600 capacity the ministry of human resource development liked our approach of training teachers and they gave us a project in 2009 under which we were to run workshops of two weeks duration under the banner of ist for up to 1000 teachers each this was a novel idea then we set up about 50 remote centers out of which 30 to 40 would participate in any workshop the methodology that we use is that for every workshop subject we choose expert faculty from these remote centers who are appointed as workshop coordinators much before the main workshop begins we invite all these coordinators to iit bombay for a rigorous one week interaction during which time these workshop coordinators tell us about the syllabus that is followed in their colleges and universities they also tell us about the examination pattern we in turn tell them about how that subject is taught here what kind of challenging problems are given to our students and during that one week interaction together we define a syllabus and an approach to the subject which could simultaneously be useful to all the college teachers as also it will imbibe some elements of rigor that is followed in iit after that the workshop coordinators go back they set up the assignment lab experiments or tutorial uh, solutions etc on the other side our faculty members prepare for the contents and that is when this workshop happens at the end of two weeks the participating teachers have to form teams and have to undertake an assignment which they have to submit within two weeks of the completion of the workshop this assignment along with all the tutorial problems lab exercises etc solved during the workshop plus all the recorded audio video lectures 
All this material is released by IIT Bombay in open source under Creative Commons by attribution license, which means that all teachers attending this course are free to use these videos, free to use these problems, and they can even modify these because it is only by attribution. In the past, the feedback that we have received from the participants has been excellent, and it is based on that feedback that we pr propose to the ministry that we would like to expand this program and we would like to train 10,000 teachers at a time. We did a pilot in June, July when we ran a program, a two week course on introduction to research methodologies that was found to be very effective and the government has approved the extension of this project to train 1,50,000 teachers over the next three years through 15 such workshops. We have IIT Kharagpur as our partner now, who will be conducting six of these workshops starting from the next summer, and at IIT Bombay will be conducting nine workshops. And of course, if the funding still remains uh, available with us, because we have always economized on the expenditure and conducted more workshops than what was originally promised. All in all, we believe that this interaction would be beneficial to the engineering education in general. And you are the first set of 6,000 teachers uh, who are participating in the first ever mega workshop formally being conducted under this new scheme. So welcome you all. And with this brief introduction, I will request Dr. Kakorkar to share his thoughts with you. Good morning to you all. Professor Fatak, Professor Gaitunde, and distinguished colleagues and friends. A teacher's training workshop, uh, I think, should be uh, a business like activity. So, strictly speaking, there should be no place for an inaugural session. Uh, but uh, this being a new initiative, uh, I believe only the second in this format, uh, maybe a short inaugural session is in order. First of all, I have to express my gratitude to both of you for this opportunity for me to be here. Uh, I have been hearing about uh, these workshops and also the, uh, the national mission on education through ICT for quite some time. Uh, and so, uh, they say not, uh, seeing is believing it and so, uh, to be a part of such a such an activity is uh, a matter of great joy. Professor Fatak, uh, has been uh, piloting this program, uh, not only this teachers training workshops or uh, this mega workshops where you engage a large number of participants, but also other modes of uh, technology enabled learning process. And uh, there is of course, uh, a significant experience accumulated in this area and it looks to me that of the several grand challenges uh, that are there before the IIT system in general and IIT Bombay in particular, this certainly is a, uh, is a mission of uh, undertaking such grand challenges and perhaps a mission which would have the largest, largest impact. IITs of course, have their own brand image in terms of uh, high quality BTECs in terms of their research and the larger impact on the world of technology both here as well as abroad. Although IITs are on an expansion path to make sure that the national technological capability goes to a higher level. But the fact still remains that compared to the size of uh, 
engineers, technologists that the country requires for its development programs, IITs are too small, the number of graduates that come out of IIT is too, too small a number. Uh, hopefully, this would expand and create larger impact, but the fact still remains that there is a fairly large uh, engineering education system in the country and it is equally important that IITs pay attention to this larger system in terms of enhancing its quality because we do need engineers coming out in large numbers and for that to happen we need teachers uh, who provide quality education in engineering and technology in large numbers and so these teachers training uh, programs have in my view uh, a great importance and uh, this particular mode, the ICT enabled mode, where the engagement uh, in a single event can go up to up to around 10,000 is uh, certainly a major, uh, major uh, effort, major achievement uh, in that direction. Of course, uh, training teachers is, uh, uh, is one important thing. But this uh, this mode, and I'm 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 aware of uh, IIT Bombay being engaged in utilizing this mode for other aspects of education. Uh, for example, uh, there is uh, this effort in terms of uh, spreading uh, familiarity with uh, with computer resources. Uh, for general masses, there is an effort uh, to engage school children. Uh, there is a big effort to create contents, including contents for uh, for experimental uh, teaching. Uh, I participated in this program, experiments. I suppose it's still going on, yeah. and that's a product I think which has. Uh, which has created waves. You can go to many other places including carry out a market search and, uh, and one can realize that these products are making an important contribution and also a large enough impact. So, ma, I must congratulate uh, Professor Fatak as well as everybody involved in this effort from IIT Bombay and their partners and collaborators in other IITs as well as other educational institutions uh, for launching this uh, very large effort which, uh, which has the, uh, the necessary uh, scale up capability and I am quite sure that uh, uh, this program would deliver very important results in a in a very short period of time this particular workshop uh, uh, which is going to be conducted by professor gaitunde and his colleagues uh, on thermodynamics uh, i must say a few sentences on that uh, because uh, in my interaction over decades in atomic energy, I came to realize that the thermodynamics, at least the thermodynamics which I had learned in when I was in engineering college and thermodynamics which several of my colleagues who came from science stream, which they learnt in their own uh, respective colleges independent of whether they come from a stream of physics, stream of chemistry uh, and it took some time to really understand each other's language and uh, going deeper it appeared to me that that is because uh, our learning was rather superficial and 
I do expect and imagine that uh, this particular workshop where uh, more than 6000 teachers are participating uh, in this very important uh, I would say they say mathematics is mother of all subjects but thermodynamics is no less and uh, this would uh, quite apart from uh, clarifying uh, different concepts and uh, the subject at large uh, would also perhaps create a common language of thermodynamics for all teachers. Of course, I probably imagine that the teachers here they will all be from engineering background most of them, uh, but uh, even so uh, teaching of this subject coming from IIT as it does, I think it will go into more fundamentals and to that extent I am pretty certain that all of you who are participating in this workshop would uh, come out more enriched, which uh, would be good uh, for your own research in future and of course, for your teaching your students in your respective colleges. So, I once again thank uh, all of you for this opportunity for me to uh, speak to you and uh, I think uh, this is not a uh, not an occasion to make long speeches. So, I stop here uh, and wish you all success in, in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Takurke. I would just like to add a couple of quick points uh, to the observations made by Dr. Takurke. Uh, these things appear important to some of us old teachers who have gone through an engineering education spanning five years. Nowadays, our teachers will be teaching students who are in a four year program. And what many of us feel is that there is a little dilution of the emphasis on basic engineering subjects. At our times, it did not matter whether you were an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer, these were the three predominant branches. I was for example, an electrical engineering student, but no matter what brand of engineering you carry on your back, you were required to do courses like thermodynamics. Uh, uh, we studied boilers, in fact, I still remember a fellow called Cochrane Boiler who troubled me no end. And, uh, uh, but it helped all of us to understand basic engineering much better. I would only submit that in line with what Dr. Kakorkar advises that you should be able to not only at the end of this two week workshop, you should be able to take some ideas from the IIT faculty, some ideas from your own fellow colleagues who are attending this workshop and should be able to teach better to your students. But I would submit that your role as teachers of basic engineering principles is far more important today given the four year uh, curriculum context and I, I hope that you will carry this spirit with you. I will now uh, temporarily suspend the session uh, to bid uh, goodbye to Dr. Kakorkar. Thank you very much Dr. Kakorkar for having, having taken special time. May I request Professor Gayatunde to kindly escort him. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. So, with the blessings of a great man, we start our deliberations here. In this uh, first session, as I said, I would like to share some thoughts about teaching and learning, especially in the context of emerging technologies. As Dr. Kakorkar mentioned, we are trying to use ICT to enlarge the scope of our engagement. Ten years later, frankly, nobody thought including us that we would be able to engage 10,000 participants meaningfully in an interaction. This kind of interaction poses certain problems like any scaling effort does. The number of interactions with the participants as a percentage of total number of participants will certainly be less. And therefore, it is suggested that all such interactions which will of course be controlled and moderated by the teachers here 
should be kept as brief and to the point as possible so that maximum number of people get a chance to interact. We have the course model and I would encourage participants to regularly post on a daily basis any queries or questions which occur to them so that those uh, postings could be looked at by our faculty colleagues and their assistants. They have a team of very capable five young students of IIT Bombay who we call our teaching assistants and with this method we should be able to sort of uh, handle the large number of queries that might crop up. More important than that, the technology that we use permits us to record lectures by the stalwarts in the video format and these lectures, video recorded lectures would also be made available to all of you. How are these kind of recorded lectures likely to change the way teaching learning happens in future is something that I would like to share with you. Traditionally, the role of a teacher is defined as take a fixed number of lectures in a semester, typically 40, 45 lectures in a semester, engage the students in tutorials and lab sessions, again of a fixed time duration, and then of course conduct evaluation and exams. If you sum all of this up, you will notice that what the current education system gives to our students through us teachers is a fixed time per subject. What in my opinion any education system must guarantee is that it must guarantee a fixed minimum knowledge to every student. Now that is difficult because different students learn at different speed and this speed is dependent upon not only their ability to grasp, some of our students are smarter, some are not so smart, they take longer to understand something. It also depends upon the interest and enthusiasm with which the students approach the course. It also depends upon the attention that they spend. It also depends upon the background preparation that they have in the course and so on. So if you consider all these factors together, the amount of learning that actually happens in the mind of a student will depend directly upon the quality time that the student spends on that subject. The word quality is important here. It's not just the physical time spent. Clearly, if you want to guarantee a minimum knowledge to every participant, then you must ensure that different students who learn at different speeds are able and are permitted to spend the required amount of quality time for that course, which itself will differ from student to student. Unfortunately, in our current model, where there are fixed number of lectures and a fixed number of tutorials and a fixed number of exams to be conducted, as I said, we are only able to guarantee a fixed time per subject. If we have to guarantee a fixed minimum knowledge to everyone, please remember what I say, minimum knowledge to everyone, not the same knowledge to everyone because that is not possible. Different people will learn different and smarter people will learn much more. But consider this, in our current examination system, there are several students who fail our final evaluation. At the least, we can say that these students who fail the course have not attained the basic minimum level of knowledge that is expected of them. I would ask you this question, who is responsible for this? Is the student truly responsible? We'll say, of course, the student did not work diligently, the student did not do homework, the student did not do did not solve problems and so on. But did I as a teacher try to ensure that even the weakest student gets the minimum knowledge? I have been teaching here for 40 years and every year if some students fail in my course and they fail in spite of my attempts, uh, I feel bad because I feel responsible for that. Now, one of the aspects of the quality time to be spent by a student in learning a course is the amount of time that student applies his or her mind in solving problems, not just reading textbooks, not just listening to the lectures, but applying those principles in solving problems. Now this typically happens in the tutorials where there are some discussions with the teaching assistants and so on. Occasionally in the classroom when the teacher asks a student some question or a student asks teacher a question and because that question is important to others as well, from that brief interaction all other students benefit. In short, interaction with teacher 
trying to solve problems together, getting hints from the teacher and applying your mind is what causes in my opinion the maximum learning. Now, why can't we consider that all our engagement with students are spent only in this kind of interaction, only in problem solving, only in asking questions, discussion. The reason we do not do it is because the current educational model says you teach for 40 hours, give lectures and then engage people for tutorials and labs and such things. The modern technology in future years to come will permit the exact reversal of role. Today we tell our students attend lectures here and try to solve problems at home. Tomorrow we will be able to tell them please attend lectures at home. These are the recorded lectures available on this server. Listen to those lectures and come to the classroom only for discussions and problem solving. By the way, this is not hypothetical. Several teachers across the world have tried it, including some of us in IIT Bombay itself. Uh, Professor Kannan Maudgale had tried this, tried this on one course. Professor Mangal Sundar at the IIT Madras has tried this, where all the lectures are pre-recorded and students are told to listen to these lectures and come prepared. Of course, how do you guarantee that students actually go through that lesson, see that video? is a simple mechanism. Every class begins with a small quiz based on the lecture that you are supposed to have attended. Both the teachers report that the interaction has benefited most of the students significantly in understanding that subject. Now consider this, if all the teachers tomorrow decide that if we have the best lectures, the best teachers already recorded, then why waste my time? in trying to give a lecture. After all, I am permitted to use a great teacher's reference book for my, for my course, which means I am officially permitted to borrow on the knowledge and explanation given by that teacher while teaching a course to my student. Why can't I extend it and say, I will also borrow the video recorded lecture of that great teacher and use that as the lecture video in my class. Of course, it does not mean that I just play that video and sit quietly doing nothing. It actually means greater responsibility on me because I will also have to understand the deeper concept that that great teacher enunciates, learn to solve problems of the kind that the great teacher recommends us to solve and then interact with the students. I would submit that in future years, the teaching is likely to undergo changes of this nature. That is the reason why as a preparation, we have decided that all uh, lectures and interactions that we have in this two week workshop is recorded and all the recorded uh, interaction is released in open source so that those of you who wish to use these can do so in your future teaching. I mentioned some time ago that different students whom you teach will have different pace of learning and it depends a lot upon not only their grasping capacity which will differ based on their IQ, but also upon the attention, the focus and the enthusiasm which they display in applying their mind to solving the problems. Now independent of how much efforts a teacher puts in to encourage students to actively participate, there would be differences in the understanding. Even today, we are able to find out that there are clearly three categories of students broadly. One set which is lagging behind so much that they do not seem to understand some basic concepts. These are the bottomers. Another set which consistently performs well in any examination or evaluation that you do, this primarily is composed of people who apply their mind consistently and are at the top of the class. We call them toppers. And then there is a large segment in between which of course is trotting along and is able to generally cope up and understand the subject well. I would submit that as teachers, we must pay special attention to each of these three groups and each of these three groups require a different kind of attention. You cannot give the same kind of attention to the entire class. Please understand that as a teacher, I am expected to relate to every student in my class. Now this can be done if I am teaching an elective course for 10 or 12 or 15 students. It is very easy for me because I know each student personally. I know exactly how that student thinks, exactly how that student works and therefore I can tackle that student's problems 
by putting myself into his mind and his shoes. It is not possible to do so when you have 40 students, 60 students, 100 students. And therefore, we talk of statistical averages and segments. But ultimately, we have to take the responsibility of ensuring that every student in our class learns something important, something better from the course that he or she undertakes. There are two things that I would like to suggest. First, how to discover which are the students who are very weak or which are the students who are very smart and doing very well. We discover them through our conventional examinations. Sadly, the conventional examinations will comprise of written tests typically taken once in a month or mid-semester exam or end semester exam. I would submit that when I conduct a written test at the end of one month and I evaluate those papers which may require another four or five days, it is too late for me to discover that these five students have not understood anything or these ten students are doing extremely well because by then it is too late to help the weaklings and it is too late to challenge the toppers with something extraordinary. How do you discover who are who? quickly enough and early enough. Some of you who are teachers in one of the 250 colleges which have joined us as partners in our Akash project and have attended the uh, two-day orientation program for Akash in education will recall that on these Akash tablets we have introduced, we have built a software called a clicker software which helps teacher conduct a quiz in the class in exactly two to three minutes, automatically getting results of the quiz on to the desktop of the teacher. We had demonstrated this earlier. For three or four years, IIT Bombay has been working on these specific clicker devices which we have experimented, not only in our classes, but even in a distributed manner. Now we will be using these on Akash. Unfortunately, we do not get sufficient number of Akash tablets in the remote centers Otherwise, Professor Gayatunde wanted to use these devices for conducting quizzes in this uh, workshop itself so that you become familiar with how the quizzes are conducted. To briefly tell you, whenever I have taught and I, I will tell you how I have been using these in, in my own classes here in IIT and how I believe people will be using it. So, I teach a concept, I give some example and then I pose a quiz. I display the quiz here, the quiz gets downloaded onto the Akash tablets in the hands of all my students. They get two minutes or three minutes to answer one or two questions. At the end of three minutes, the answers are automatically collected back. They come to the teacher's laptop through a server and the teacher can very quickly see the results of the quiz immediately, though no paper correction, no paper distribution, nothing. What is the advantage? And this, I, I will tell you, I, it has happened with me. Many times when I feel that I have explained something well and students have understood this concept, when I conduct the quiz, I suddenly find out that 70 percent people are giving wrong answers. What does it mean? It means that my explanation was inadequate. People did not understand that concept. Please remember, I could discover the same things through con conventional tests, but that will be two weeks, three weeks, one month later. Here I discover it immediately after teaching that concept. What does it permit me? On all such occasions, whenever this thing happened, luckily it did not happen too many times, but whenever it happened, I could immediately discuss an additional example and offer some more explanation. So that before the concept is gone from their minds, when the concept is very fresh in their minds, they get an additional input, they get an additional explanation and that clarifies so many of their doubts so that the concept is well learned. I believe this is an extremely important feedback for a teacher, instantaneous feedback on the, on whether the concept is understood by students or not. In future, this would happen regularly because instead of notebooks, people would have Akash like tablets, I do not say Akash tablets, but tablets in their hands. Just like the laptops and PCs took some time to percolate down and they can still be, they are used by our students, but only in their hostel rooms or in the lab, but not in the classroom. In future years, practically all students at least of engineering colleges are likely to have Android tablets or Linux tablets in their hands. We have to prepare ourselves for teaching students with 
who are enabled with such technology and we are enabled by use of that technology. So I would submit that all of you should spend time now to start preparing for small quiz questions that can be asked to test the understanding of a subject. There is an additional advantage that I get. I will tell you what I did in the course which I taught uh, CS101 course with the clickers of course. At the end of every week, because I have a back-end software which would analyze, I would conduct about three to five quizzes in three lectures that I would take and I would get the results of all the five quizzes for all 500, 600 students which I had in my class. Now, at the end of the week, by Friday evening, I will know which are about 20 students who are consistently giving wrong answers to all quizzes. What I do then? I call my teaching assistants who engage them in the labs and tutorials and I tell them, this is the list of these 20 students, they require personal attention. So send an email to them, call all of them on Saturday and spend two hours with them explaining these concepts with these additional examples. On the other hand, I also get to know some 8 or 10 jokers who are scoring 100% marks in every quiz. Now these are clearly the guys who believe that they know all. I call them personally on a Sunday morning and tell them, look, you guys are smart. You think you are very smart. So here are some harder problems which I normally don't give in the class. But since you are smarter, you should attempt these questions. And believe me, when they get challenged like that, they apply their mind. They are smart people, very smart people. They apply their mind and they solve these problems with a great hard effort. Whether they get them or not is a different question, but you are challenging them with harder problems. I started doing this through an experience. Some of you would know that I spent one year uh, doing a sort of Bharat Yatra where I visited some small colleges to find out how the engineering teaching happens there. And in every place I found some very brilliant students and a couple of teachers who were taking extraordinary efforts to teach differently. That is where I learned the importance of handling the smarter students in a different way by challenging them more. There is one college where one teacher told me that he conducts an electronics lab every Sunday morning. What does he do? He says we take up some problem, analyze that problem, design two or three alternative circuits and the students come every Sunday diligently, build that circuit, we test them and they learn a lot. I was so thrilled, I asked him, all the students come there, he says, no sir, 15 or 20 students come out of class of 70. And I said, but these 15 or 20 people are different. They don't care for the syllabus. They believe they can learn something by solving hard problems. And therefore, what you are doing is extraordinary. I would submit, my dear friends, that just as that teacher used to spend three hours every Sunday on the smartest students of his class, challenging them with harder problems, if some of you decide to attempt that, you would be doing a great contribution. Please remember, that while we must ensure that everybody learns a minimum basic knowledge of a subject that we teach, the smarter students must be learning much more than that. Why? Because these are the people, the so-called toppers from your colleges, who are likely to make a non-linear difference to themselves and to their society. These are the people who are capable of generating wealth disproportionate to their number. And a society and a nation is built largely on the strength of what these people do and how these people conduct themselves professionally. I would submit that the modern information and communication technology through gadgets such as Akash, through devices such as video recording and through an appropriately adopted pedagogy, reversal of teaching as I said, let students study, let students listen to the lectures at their homes or maybe in a small group on Saturday, Sunday. But in the classroom engagement, they will be there only for discussing problems for solving problems. Please remember this puts a much greater onus on us. Believe me, giving a lecture is relatively much easier than discussing and solving problems with students. Because when I give the lecture, I have a lot of time to prepare myself and I give a prepared lecture. But when I am discussing problems with students, completely unthought of ideas will come forward and I have to take snapshot decision of this is right, that is right whether that approach is better, this approach is better. Believe me that not only me, but most of my colleagues in IIT who actually do these kind of things, encourage a lot of discussions, discuss hard problems. We ourselves learn a lot 
during the during the course. That is why we have a saying here that if you want to learn a course well, teach it. Because when you teach it, this kind of interaction helps you to do that. I will conclude my uh, deliberations here because you have a lot more to uh, study on thermodynamics. Frankly speaking, I must admit that uh, uh, I have not yet understood thermodynamics. I, I only know that left to itself in any system, the entropy increases. I take it to mean that in any system, whether it is a social system or a engineering system or a business system, unless there are proper controls, chaos would result and chaos would increase. I would take chaos to be uh, equivalent of increasing entropy. I do not know whether Professor Gayatonde would agree with that, but of course, you will have a lot of discussions there. So, in short, I am very happy to have all of you here. Since we still have 10 or 15 minutes, I would request uh, a brief comments from few of the centers that I would like to visit. Of course, I will be randomly picking up centers, so please do not raise your hands. Let me go over to Ernakulam to KME Engineering College. Let me see if uh, they are audible and visible to us. Yes, I can see participants there. Uh, could someone make a brief comment? Over to you. Too early to make a comment. However, this is a good program for the teachers uh, who really enjoy teaching thermodynamics. Of course, we have got some participants who are not mechanical engineering department. I hope that they will benefit by attending this course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your observations. I will now go over to Savita Engineering College at Chennai. Let me see if uh, Chennai friends are visible. Yes, I can see uh, participants in that college. May I request for a brief observation or comment from the coordinator or someone, please? Over to you. Good morning, sir. So, we are from Savita Engineering College, Chennai. Um, so we are pleased to join this workshop uh, with our participants and we hope we, our participants will learn from the uh, lectures by professors, experts from IIT Bombay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, since I could not connect to MNIT Bhopal, let me try another college in Bhopal, IES College of uh, Technology. Let me see if they are visible. Yes, I can see some people. Over to you, sir. I have uh, listened to your lecture. And since long, we were uh, observing that uh, teaching has to be carry on learning. And this is one of the attempts. I think the workshop will benefit the faculty as well as the student. This is my view. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Amruta Vishwavidyapitam Coimtur. Uh, as some of you would know, uh, Amruta Vishwavidyapitam are the people uh, uh, who have developed the AVU software that we are using for uh, this entire exercise. Uh, let me go over to Amruta Vishwavidyapitam and see. Uh, yes, I can see some participants there. Over to you, Amruta, for some brief comments. Uh, good morning, sir. I am so happy to see you again. Uh, Listen to you also, and uh, all our participants have uh, reported also. Uh, all the eight are here. We are very happy about it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Amrita. Uh, let me go to a college in Maharashtra, Walchan Institute of Technology, Solapur. Uh, is online. So let me see. Yes, I can see a lot of participants at Solapur. Uh, over to you for brief comment, please. Ah, so your lecture was inspiring. Let us see what happens after 10 days. <laughs> that is well said. There are 54 participants at our center. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a special center, Avinashilingam University for Women at Coimbatore. Originally, we had some problem in identifying that as a remote center for thermodynamics. 
and then Professor Gayatonde, uh, based on an appeal made by a faculty member from that university, agreed to make that as a center. So we will go over to that center and see if there are participants there. Yes, I can see a lot of participants there. Over to you for a brief comment. Uh, I am the workshop coordinator. Sorry, I am the RC coordinator, and we have uh, 17 members here. It will be very useful for us, and uh, we have uh, three participants from uh, outside uh, our uh, college, and in, in, in house participants, there are 15. Thank you so much. Let me go over to some college in the north. There is a college in Alwar, Margaret Engineering College, Alwar. Let me see if uh, there are participants in Alwar. Yes, uh, I can see a lot of participants there. Uh, I hope they are able to listen to us. Uh, over to you, Alwar, for brief comments. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Uh, may I ask how many participants do you have in your remote center, please? Over to you. There are 25 faculty, 25 faculty members from mechanical engineering. Thank you very much. I hope you will enjoy this course. Uh, there is one center in Kaithal, Haryana, HCTM Technical uh, Campus, Kaithal. Uh, let me see if uh, friends from Kaithal are able to see us and hear us and whether we can hear them. Uh, yes, a large number of participants there. Uh, over to you, Kaithal, for a quick comment. Please tell us how many participants are attending. Over to you. It's a very good workshop engineering third very, very good workshop to engineering third dynamics, which will be helpful to the faculty as well as to the students because we'll teach, we will learn from the IIT faculties that how to teach the students to a particular class. Over to you. Thank you so much. I am so happy that you are so well organized and you have, you have so many participants attending this workshop. I hope all of you and all of us benefit from this interaction. Uh, we are close to the closing time, so let me quickly try just a, a couple of uh, new centers which were not there earlier. Uh, let me go over to the Sveri College of Engineering, uh, Pandarpur. Uh, over to you, Pandarpur. Hello, good morning, sir. This is uh, Yashpal Kedkar. Uh, so, in our center, we are having 26 participants. Uh, out of uh, that 26, five members are from uh, outside. And uh, we are uh, really happy that we are part of uh, this uh, workshop. Uh, after a successful workshop of uh, Akash, now we are experiencing this engineering thermodynamics workshop with you. We are very happy, sir. Thank you very much. Over. Thank you very much, Sveri. Uh, we are very happy to connect with you on multiple uh, 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 sort of uh, occasions and we will continue to do so in future as well. Uh, there is a university in Uttar Pradesh in Beswan, Mangalayatan University. Let me try to go over to Uttar Pradesh and see our friends there. Yes, I can see a number of participants in the university there. Uh, may I request for a brief comment? Over to you. We are having, sir, 15 participants. One is from outside. And we are enjoying this workshop very much. And uh, I would like to thank you uh, for this organization. Can we use the Akash tablet for conducting this workshop? Sir, because we were having Akash workshop also. Can we use Akash tablet for conducting this workshop? Okay, as I mentioned earlier, originally we wanted Akash tablets to be used for conducting quizzes on a daily basis here. Unfortunately, we have not been able to send more than 40 tablets per remote center, the 250 remote centers. Also, unfortunately, some of the centers participating in this workshop are not yet Akash project centers, so they have no tablets at all. Consequently, we have decided that in this particular workshop, we may not use the tablet. I am going to send a query to all the remote center coordinators shortly 
to find out how many tablets they have and how many participants they have. Just as a trial, I might request Professor Gaitonde to conduct a couple of quizzes in the second week of the workshop, not in the first week. Uh, thank you so much. I think we are now approaching uh, the end of our time. Thank you very much for your interest. The interest remains uh, uh, continuous and active over the next two weeks of a very rigorous program that my colleagues have planned here. Uh, with this, we'll break for tea now. Thank you very much. And thank you, Professor Gayatonde. Thank you, Professor Bandarkar. And thank you, Professor Puranik. And all the best for the ensuing workshop. Thank you.